Yo, check it out. This is Just Insane from Anti Flag, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Peace. I think 2010 was the last time I saw you. We did an acoustic session on Warp Tour um, wow. in Pomona. Yeah. And that was the last time that I saw you. I've seen the, the other guys. Better than my memory, so. <laughs> That's because all those all those stage dives you're taking, man. <laughs> <laughs> you land on your coconut one too many hey, times. You got you got problems. It yeah. happens. Speaking of the falls, American Fall was such a great record. Thank you. Um, as always, you guys never disappoint. Wicked, thanks. Um, this record was different because. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time you had uh, co-writes. You had wow. Andrew Goldstein and uh, yeah. you had someone else in there. Well, I mean, we, we've Steven. always all written together, right? you know, as a band. I mean, sometimes I'll write a song by myself or two will write a song by himself or, or Chris or Pat. But in general, we've always co-written together. And I love co-writing with people. I've been doing okay. it for years. Really? But I didn't even you, know that. I thought yeah. it was just the band that would always but like But usually write. not for Anti-Flag, just okay. for outside stuff with my friends. So it's not like quote-unquote co-writing. <laughs> right. But I, what I love about writing music with other people is that they, when another person brings an idea to you, mm -hmm. even if it's just a line, a couple of words for right. me, it takes my it takes me into just like a completely different place where I just start to think about something that I completely wasn't thinking about, and and I find that you'll end up writing something that you just would have never written by yourself, yeah. you know, and simply even if it's just because they write a guitar riff and you're like I would have never written that, and then the whole thing is built off of that, or like I said, like they have a lyric and right. you're like holy shit I would have just never written that down, yeah. so. Yeah, uh, writing with Stevie was amazing. Like, yeah, writing with Andrew was really cool. Um, we did one song each with mm. with one of those guys, and uh, you know, we 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 wrote with some other people too. Um, those songs didn't make the record, but it was it was cool. Like, you know, to work with somebody outside of the band and then you know have a have one of the or two of their songs on the record. It was right. really cool. So how do, how does that how does that work? Because like Andrew, for example, well Stevie is more with. Uh, 30, seconds 30 seconds to Mars, to Mars and then yeah. Andrew is more like in the pop world yeah. um, so you know how does it work it that like you come in with these mutual ideas mutual friends okay. it was it was mutual friends who were like you guys would click with this guy I've talked to them mm -hmm. they're aware of you or they knew knew of you or like in the case of I think of both those guys I think at one time our bands were to get on tour together yeah. on Warp Tour or whatever mm -hmm. so we were all kind of aware of each other a little bit right. and then just having like a third party be like hey you should get together with them right so that was sort of how it came together but the, the cool thing about it is that because they write for different styles of genres this is still an anti flag record. Yeah, you know, yeah. it didn't kind of, you didn't sacrifice anything. Right. So how did you, how did you kind of introduce them to the world of anti flag and be like, well, you know, this is how we write our songs. Yeah, I mean, this is the type of songs we right. write. Right. Well, like in Stevie's case, he just came in with an idea and um, we just ran with it, yeah. you know? But again, like both of them were very aware of what anti flag is and mm -hmm. what anti flag sounds like and what we do. So they came in with a bit of a sense. It wasn't just like they were coming in blind, like, and, right. and, and so I think for that reason, and especially with Stevie coming from the rock world, like that just clicked so fast, so easy, right. you know? With Andrew, we knew that he kind of worked more on the pop stuff. So we were kind of like, hey, we have an idea. We want to try going in this way with this song. Mm -hmm. And it really is like the most popular poppy song on the record, right. you know? And even like the lead is like, you know, most most of our guitar leads are something where it's just me and a distortion pedal and crank the amp, you know? <laughs> like because of his background, we were like, well, hey, let's like try and throw some synth in there. What would that be like on an anti flag record? What right. would that like? And what if we overdrive a synth? You know, like what's that like? And he was able to be like, oh, you mean like this? You know, and like turn some knobs <laughs> and like, holy simple. shit. Yeah. yeah, and it was really cool because that's just something that I would have never been able to do by myself. Right. And the fact that you guys kind of did that for this record, how did that change the live show? Um, did you guys incorporate more things to the live show? Is the live show still kind of the same? The live show stays the same. What really happens, I think, with the anti flag, and I think probably with a lot of bands, is a song in a lot of ways is never done. Yeah. You know, I mean, you you write a song when you sit down by yourself for the first time, and and it and it's and it looks like one thing. Then you put other people on it, and it looks right. like something else. You put it on tape and mix it, and then it's like this, you know, it's this uh, stationary thing, but then you take it again out into the live world, and it usually changes. Like, right. in American Attraction, like, we have a part where we just completely break right in the middle of the song, and we, you know, we kind of break it down, and 
you know, that's something that's not on the record. And, you know, I think the music is always kind of like this living thing. It can change and it can flow. And right. so um, it, it the songs impacted the live set and that once we brought them into the live set, we looked at how we could open the songs up and use them to better connect with the audience. Mm. And American Attraction is a song that works really well in that way. Another song of the last record is Racists. Um, that song, I think, works really well, like, as far as being able to break it down and, um, you know, use the song in a way where we can really intimately connect with the audience. And, right. of course, with the live experience, it's so much different than the studio experience because the studio experience you you have all possibilities are open you can put a hundred guitars on a track or right. <laughs> or 50 vocals or you know you can overdub a bunch of things and you know you're trying to create um, you know a very different piece of art than you are in the live set where it's just two guitars a bass our vocals and and the drumming like so that being the case like we with the live show we're like all right well in the studio we made it like this most perfect thing it can be right. with the live thing what can it be that it can just be used to connect with the audience that's here tonight okay and then that changes because the audience changes you know in a small club it's very different yeah, than at a true. big festival that's very true that's very true and as far as like change goes like this is the this was the 10th album for the band so like how do you feel that evolution has been since 92 um yeah. for you guys wow i mean it's, it's, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're much better musicians, you know, I mean, it's funny, I saw Mike Ness one time, like, that was the first thing he said, and they asked him, like, well, how's social distortion different? He's like, well, I can play my guitar a lot better, you know, and, it, and it's true, I mean, it allows you to do some things, and I think that once you make a couple of records, you, you start to look for different things than you did when you were first starting. I mean, when we were first starting, it was just like, can I get play the chords yeah. and just get them on tape, you know? Or and, and now it's, you know, okay, I can play the guitar, I can play the chords, so, but now I want the timing to be really precise. Yeah. And you're looking for things to be cleaner or like even in tune, which is just something that we never thought of when we started <laughs> out, you know? There was just a lot more raw, like... Not so much punk anymore, man. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and that's the trick. It's like you still want that raw energy. You still yeah. want to keep it punk, but you also, there are things, you, because you have the ability to be more musical with it, you want to be because right. that's exciting, you right. know, and, and that's a fun thing to do. And um, so it, they've definitely changed where I think the records, the production's just better, it, they're cleaner, mm -hmm. but the overall message behind the band is the same. Right. I mean, we are a band that stands against nationalism, which, you know, is, is simply a corrupted patriotism, mm -hmm. you know, and you, we see that with Donald Trump where he is always kind of pushing this corrupted patriotism and it's a way to manipulate people it really is you know like this kind of idea that America is the best and is first and the reality is that we need the whole world to work together yeah. and it, it's counterproductive to making the planet a better place for not only Americans but for all people right. whenever you push that kind of agenda and you know I think that you know when the, when anti like started as a punk band we were like wow you know there's punk kids here that we're friends with in America. I wonder what the punks are like over in Germany or down in South America or in right. Russia. And, you know, I just had this inkling that I could probably like hang out with punk kids anywhere and it would be cool. And, and you know, then I finally got to go to those places mm. and it was. It was exactly what I thought it would be like. And, and so this idea of sort of holding one nationality up over another, I... I've always had had an inkling that that was something that was a, a, a false reality and a false choice. Right. And um, so how has the band changed? Well, a lot of kind of the ideas that we had that, that hadn't been affirmed for us, they have been affirmed yeah. because we've been able, we have a life experience now and we have world experience and we've been able to go out into the world and, and have, the, have these things that for us at one time were kind of like a theory or a philosophy that hadn't been tested and that philosophy has now been tested. Mm -hmm. And um, so in that way, the, the band has changed and I, I think it's a really positive outcome. You know, it, it really is an affirm, like it, it really affirms to me that what the band stands for is right. And the, the idea of being an anti-war band, the right. idea that, you know, when you go and you fight in a war, you're really just fighting to secure the power of, and the wealth of people who already have power and wealth at the expense of yourself and uh, at the expense of other people and other, other nations that are just, trying to work a nine to five, just trying to get through their lives, trying to, you know, maybe accomplish some hopes and dreams, you know. So those things are the same. And, 
You know, I, I guess if you want to look at it musically, I mean, we still, I, I think with improving as a band, we have the ability to be just as aggressive as we've always been. Right. And, but also to try and be a little more experimental and do some things that we just wouldn't have been able to do successfully before. Right. So even like when you look back at like the, t um, for Blood and Empire, like a song like This Is The End is a song that we would ne never have been able to write and, and execute on a record like Die For The Government. Mm -hmm. But I still think that they're both really cool punk songs, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, and, and on top of that, like I, recently I was actually with Tim from Rise Against and I was talking to him about how this last album they were kind of trying to figure out where they fit in in the music world because when Rise Against first started they were one of the few bands that would be political and you know the same with you guys you were one of the few bands that were political now a lot of bands because of because of Trump like a lot yeah. of bands a lot of artists sure. are opening up so did that kind of change your mindset too like were you worried at one point like where do we fit in this music world because everybody's opening their mouths now like we're not exclusively just anti-flag it's like everybody else well i think that that's great i mean that's what we we hoped for yeah. you know i mean and and like for example when we wrote for 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 blood and empire there really weren't a lot of bands that there were almost none especially in the mainstream mm. that were speaking out against the war in iraq yeah and we made that record and tried to put it in as many hands as we could because we wanted people to take an honest look at what U.S. foreign policy was mm -hmm. and why it was happening. And, you know, I, I think when more people started to come around to that idea and make that statement, I was excited by that because I feel like that's what, you know, art really starts to... Uh, impact people on an emotional level, right? So since art can connect with people like on a, an emotional level, it can actually have an impact to change people's minds in a way that right. just hearing somebody make an argument to you can't. Right. And, um, you know, so it, when it comes to anti-flag, we just continue to be who we are, yeah. you know, and to be about what we're about. And I think that there's room for all voices. You know, some people are going to bring an idea or a message that we're not going to bring. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, it's a big tent and uh, all, all possibilities should be open and, um, you know, all strategies should be welcome. Yeah. No, I've always appreciated that about you guys. Um, you know, growing up, like, that was, that was my way of getting political, like, just listening to your stuff. And that's how I understood what was going on around the world. Um, and I'm sure a lot of your fans are the same way. Um, now, uh, 15, 16 years ago with Terror State, you got to... Uh, work with Tom Morello, he produced the record. Yeah. Um, so that's another political person, you know, in this in this music music scene. So, you know, when you guys were together producing that that uh, record, like how much impact did Tom Morello have in the way that you wrote for that album? Well, yeah, I mean, Tom had a lot of impact on the band overall uh, over many years, yeah. you know, um, just kind of the philosophy he brought, the never say die, never give up philosophy, yeah. you know, making us believe that we had the ability to have an impact on people's lives for the better. And even if you, you create something that just has a, a positive impact on one person's life, it is a success, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and, and then the idea that somebody as talented as Tom Morello would take an interest in what we were doing was really inspiring to us and made us believe in ourselves. And that, that was really special for us. So we, we owe a lot, of, a lot of gratitude to Tom and yeah. we're, we really are really grateful to him for all the things he's done for us over the years. And then just to be <coughs> around such a creative force, you know, to be able to present our songs to him. Like on that record, you know, we presented our songs to him and mm -hmm. He critiqued them and talked to us about them and helped us shape them in certain ways. And, and uh, you know, I think that that was the first time we'd really ever done that, where we kind of had a producer and showed somebody our songs and they said, you should change this to this. And, you know, and in a way that was sort of like our first experience of, of, of writing with somebody outside of ourselves yeah. and, and realizing that, wow, they're there's such a benefit to that yeah. you know and i and i almost believe like everyone should do that yeah, because cool. you know it's it's great a lot of times you when you create something you're so close to it that you can't you sometimes miss the most simple thing mm -hmm. and sometimes there's um you could change one small thing that would improve it like a hundred times over right. and um so it is i think really a positive thing to involve more more sets of ears and eyes and what you're creating right. um so yeah i mean there i could go on and on about the impact of tom but overall tom is just 
you know, he's clearly a really creative and really brilliant guy, and it's it's been, you know, it's been exciting for us to be able to work with someone yeah. like that. No, that's amazing. Um, and what do you guys have planned out for, for the rest of the year as far as, like, new music? Is there plans for another record? I know oh, we're on yeah. that two, three-year uh, change already. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> crazy. I mean, we're, we're writing right now, so... Um, Maybe we'll have something out before the end of this year, yeah. uh, if not early next year. I mean, clearly there's a lot to talk about right now. You know, I think that it's really important that we recognize the worth of all people yeah. and realize, like, um, you know, there's, there's a, most people are just looking for the most basic things in life. Mm. And we as a society have the ability to, we have the, we have the ability to provide those things to right. most people. And most people are willing to participate in society in a really positive way. So it's important for us to give up our biases and break down barriers between each other and come together and recognize that we're all much more similar than we are different. Yeah. And that, you know, if we, we really do have the ability to take care of one another and, um, so, so for me, you know, there are a lot of people raising their voices right now. I think that that's really exciting, and I hope that continues. Um, it seems like, you know, that's a scary thing to some people, and some people are like, oh, they're taking it too far, you know. Well, you know, my attitude is like, you know, there was a time in America when people were saying, you know, you shouldn't use the N-word anymore. Yeah. And the opposition was saying, oh, you're taking it too far. Right. You're too reactionary. Right. You know, I, I don't think you, you can ever push the envelope too far. And right. especially as artists, I think it's important to, to push the envelope. Yeah. Because, you know, that's where change comes from. The change only comes when we really push for it and when we, you know, we encourage people to uh, try to see things from another per person's perspective. Right. Well, dude, I'd, again, it's a pleasure reuniting with you. I can't wait. Warp Tour, congratulations for the 25th anniversary oh, yeah. for Warp Tour. Yeah, yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, that'll be cool. Now, here's one thing that I know you've been dying to do, and I, I, I've been dying to see it. When is Saturday Night Live going to happen? <laughs> I think this is the perfect time for. If you're listening. It's time for Anti Flag <laughs> to play Saturday Night Live. It is, and then I can die. Yeah. So that's cool. We got to make his dream because he's made ours. Oh so. yeah, word up. We'll right. see.